Hello, my name is Peas, and this is Puyo Pop, also known as Minute Puyo Puyo. This game released for the Game Boy Advance in 2001 as one of Sega's first games for any Nintendo console after they became third party, and this is Sonic Team's first entry into the Puyo Puyo franchise. Alright, so this is the um, t Trial Labyrinth category, and time's going to start right around here. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit about what this category is and what is going on in Puyo Puyo. So, for starters, um, the goal of Puyo Puyo is to build as many chains as possible. And I say that because um, starting with Puyo Puyo 2, there is a, a, the game uses a rule set where you're allowed to offset Puyo slash counterattack your opponent. Um, as, as noted by the garbage Puyo that I'll be sending to uh, Ragnus's board there. <laughs> Think of this as a sega version of Tetris, or, you know, Dr. Mario, Pokemon Puzzle League. Um, funnily enough, many people know Puyo Puyo um, um, if they ever played Dr. Robotics Mean Bean Machine or Kirby's Avalanche on the SNES. Alright, so basically, for, for a Puyo Puyo speedrun, my goal is to build a very fast uh, power chain, or, or basically build a, a really strong 5 chain, so that... Um, I'm, I'm able to force my opponent to top out, essentially. D d deal more than enough damage for my opponent to not have any chance of being able to offset the damage and um, prolong the fight from there. Those little pink, pinkish, purplish um, garbage Puyo that you see on, on the bottom uh, part of the board there is something called Point Puyo. Um, it was actually kind of introduced in Puyo Puyo 4 or Puyo Puyon as as basically a way to increase the damage of your of your chains. So say that I say that I, I do a one chain, which usually sends um, one uh, one garbage puyo. It has the chance to send a row of garbage puyo to um, over over to the board. So there's also something called margin time, where if a match lasts too long. Um, the damage will become uh, much stronger, you know, just to <laughs> let the match be over, essentially. So there, are, um, I was I was able to use the point Puyo to my advantage so that I can get um, some, some extra garbage to Sara Lee's board so that she can top out much quicker. All right. So the really nice thing about spewing Puyo Puyo is that you have full control of your decision making, despite the fact that um, you have to deal with RNG, and in this game's case, there's a little bit of lag once you drop Puyo. I guess you could say end lag, um, but, but once you once you commit to a drop, um, which means you have to you have to be very precise with your builds. Um, and as we get into the run. Um, the drop speed will become much faster, which means I need I need to be very careful in where I drop um, Puyo on my side of the board. So for this fight, we go we go to three colors, and I'm which makes it easier for me to to go up with something called an all clear, in which if I clear um, my my entire board with with any chain. Um, I'm given a damage boost, which basically deals um, more more than two rows uh, to my to my opponent uh, uh, unless they also get an all clear and uh, you know offset that damage so that that's basically the funny frog fight done <laughs> so the early game can be a little bit annoying especially if the AI just starts to get a random chain off or they'll just start stalling and things like that um, so there's actually another type of garbage Puyo that you may have seen um, earlier. Um, also kind of introduced in Puyo Puyo 4. Um, you basically, uh, it's, it's, a spe it's a special kind of garbage where um, it takes more than one pop to basically clear uh, the garbage Puyo from, uh, fr from the board um, as shown here. So I'm luckily able to to get this two chain and then be able to get almost almost able to get a follow up there before uh, Kikumura was forced to top out. So that's that fight done. Now Sukedara, I like to call the funny fish. Um, 
So this is this is one of two fights where the AI actually has a set um, pattern. So for <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because Sigitar is actually the second fight in um, Puyo Puyo One, and he and he's he 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 he's always known to basically um, stack uh, more than more than half of Puyo on on his side of the board. <laughs> so. More, more than half of the pairs of the Puyo on his side of the board, which makes it easier for me to um, clean through fights, uh, as, as shown here. And then Harpy will do a chaining form, well, not really a chaining form, a building form, to where she'll stack Puyo from, col like, in columns one and column six. Column one being the leftmost side of the board, and column six being the rightmost part of the board. All right, so my gold was actually my gold split was actually really fast, so and I was also on a really good run. This is post commentary, so I ended up deciding to take it a, a little bit safe, and luckily I was able to get a power three to deal um, an enough damage to, so that even if Harpy gets um, a lot of point Puyo damage on her like on my on my side, it wouldn't even matter. So, all right, so we're gonna have a music change here. And Zone Dymo, the game just becomes a, a bit more difficult, to put it simply. So I'm 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 really having to use power change to my advantage. I decided to get a, a little aggressive here because that power two was basically equivalent, like the power two plus the point puyo is equivalent to a four chain, which is really strong and really fast. And we look and we want fast. <laughs> Alright, so our next fight I'm gonna be changing builds here just just to play just to play a little bit safe here and this is something called grand tanaka rensa or gtr for short um this is the most basic chaining form um well i guess effective chaining form if you're playing this game competitively and i play a little bit of competitive puyo it's really hard <laughs> um but G but gtr um can take a little bit to master and as shown here I kind of had a little bit of a slow venture, so uh, Draco was just able to capitalize on me basically being slow here. Um, but thankfully, I'm I'm able to clean through this fight even um, with me taking it really safe. And thankfully, the garbage video not blocking where I need to uh, get my trigger point off. So, so that's a power four into a five. Um, and, and and I think I had, I had almost triggered margin time there, so um, we move on. All right, so Minotaur's here or Minotaur. The best way to take on this fight is to stair stack and let Minotaur uh, get damage on you, preferably a one chain. But there's a chance that he will randomly set off a two chain. It's kind of hard to predict when the AI will set their chains off um a lot of this game is just rng to put it simply the, the, literally the only way to um manipulate um set set rng is is through um is through tasks so all right so thankfully I, I was able to use the point puyo to my advantage to, to deal um a lot of damage and we're now um going to take on witch here and uh same idea i'm gonna do a little stair stacking and um i actually make a misdrop here because i was thinking that um I, I, I was going to have enough height to uh basically get get this point for uh, i'm sorry get to get this point puyo there um which would have actually cleaned the fight but it's fine because i was able to get a solid follow-up here like so all right, and the AI was just trying uh, her hardest to um, basically stall and dig through, and we don't want that. <laughs> All right, so the music is going to change once again, and these next couple of fights are very, very difficult uh, to get through, especially with nerves. Uh, I remember right around here, I was very, very nervous <laughs> because um, I was going for world record um, basically for the submission video, and I'm, I'm really happy that... Um, I was able to um, play um, really well past Shezo. So I honestly thought right there I was able to get my um, 
um, blues in order, or, or basically uh, sneak those yellows um, in column five, in column four to column five, but it just, it just didn't, didn't work out as planned. Um, I think the great one of the greatest parts about speedrunning Puyo Puyo is knowing when you're in a very tough scenario and just thinking thinking on the fly, and that's just something that I that I do best with this game, or I guess with this series. So. Um, <laughs> I do I do a little bit of soft trolling there because I I already knew that I won the fight. <laughs> so we just go from there. All right. So next up is Rulu. And I honestly considered this fight to be the second hardest if um if it's not really really the hardest because Carbuncle is our final fight, um which which happens to be our companion. But funnily enough, I didn't even explain the plot of this game. <laughs> we'll save that for um, whenever whenever I, I do post commentary for the all courses uh, category, which which is done on a complete save file and also includes the trial labyrinth. But in any case, um, Rudo is is Arl's rival in this case, which means that she's going to have very annoying AI. She's going to play very aggressive and she's going to top out on purpose. <laughs> Simple as that. All right, so next up we have the Dark Prince, who happens to be the, the main antagonist of the Puyo Puyo series. And this dude literally just decided to steal Carbuncle because he just, he just wants to go on a date with Arl. And Arl's just not having that. <laughs> Arl being the main character, of, of course. So um, I do something pretty uh, interesting in this fight. Um, it's, it, 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 it's, another, it's a case of thinking on the fly. And ensuring that I don't cut my chain like right here. If if I had rotated those blues on top of the purples, I would have actually cut my chain and um, therein not uh, knocked out uh, Dark Prince um, quickly there. So Pre pretty good fight. And now we're coming up to the final fight of the game, which is against Carbuncle, Carl's companion. Um, time is gonna be whenever the uh, whenever Carbuncle's board drops, and I get really lucky here as I nail this all clear. And the the really hard thing about this fight is that um, not only is Carbuncle good at chaining, but he also gets Point Puyo on his side of the board. So we want to make sure that we're able to get the all clear and basically clean the fight just like that. And time. So I'm really happy that I was able to get this world record. And you know, feature it in in a submission video, and, and just have it as you know, post commentary, <laughs> uh, because so so many things happen in um, Puyo Puyo uh, that um, it can, it can be really hard to um, you know talk and and you know ha have that right mindset. So um, I really I really love playing Puyo Puyo and and experiencing in general, and I really hope. Um, to get the opportunity to be able to play this game again for uh, GDQ, and also, and again, I use this for future um, submission videos and things like that. So, thank you so much for watching. <laughs>